we have now got this is equal to 2x squared plus 16x plus 24. Any ideas what I'm going to do next? Karan? Fantastic. So between you and Sarah, absolutely spot on. We're going to factorise it, but before we do, we must get that equal to zero. We need that thing to be gone. Okay? So leaving nothing on this side, I'm still going to have 2x squared plus 16x, but I need to stick into my calculator. 24, take away uh, 212.5, which is minus 188.5. Okay, now... I'm pretty good at factorising. I blow my own trumpet. I said, been to modesty lessons. I'm pretty good, but you know, there are one or two people in the world who are slightly better. Um, I can't factorise that. Why? Yeah, it's solid because it ends in a 0.5 for one. What's the pair of numbers at times to 188.5? Oh, come on. What are they? I don't expect to do that. Yeah, and that's about it, isn't it? Does that add? Um, does that add together to make sixteen? Either no. Heard a really good couple of ideas. You could times everything by two and see if that makes a difference. So if we double everything, we'd have four x squared plus thirty two x minus whatever that is doubled. But what have we got on this paper? A calculator. Calculator. So we can stick it into. Excellent. The quadratic formula. Okay. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a, where, and can you make sure you write it like this every time for me, where a equals b equals c equals, what's a? 2. 2, what's b? 16. c? Minus 18. Well done, minus 188.5. One, one, uh, okay? So now it's just a case of substituting that. The way that will definitely, definitely, definitely work that you'll see me write down is if you change every letter to open brackets and then just change those numbers into that, it will work out. It's a little bit messy, it's a little bit long, and a lot of you in here will say, oh, it's a bit quick if I do this. Fine, whatever works for you, okay? I'm going to add it for the first one, and then I'll take it away after. Okay, so B was 16, so I was chucking 16 there, 16 there. Uh, then A, so that's 2, 2, that's in here, minus 188.5. Start off by pressing the fraction button. So that's minus 16 plus the square root of 16 squared minus 4 and then 2. Just check your numbers are right. Minus 188, it is 188, isn't it? 0.5, yeah. And then over 2 lots of 2. Oh, so it was actually quite a nice number. 13, point, 13 over 2, sorry. You could if you want to. 7.5 is fine. 6.5 is fine. Don't put 7.5. That would be wrong. Okay, and then the shortcut to getting back to that square root. If I press this one, I've got to go through the whole thing, and it takes ages. If I just press the right, I would have come out right by it. Okay. And that gives me minus um, 29 over 2 or minus 14.5. And stealing some of Paul's dry wit, which one could it not be? It can't be that one because it would cease to exist, wouldn't it? I haven't, I haven't, got, I haven't got the same. It's all on camera. Can I just start a black hole? I don't, know, I don't know if you want that recorded. Okay, so it's going to be 6.5 centimetres because the minus thing just wouldn't make any sense. Okay, have I answered the question? Go back, check. No, probably not. By using an algebraic method to calculate the area of the smaller rectangle, I have found out what x is. I haven't found the area of the smaller rectangle. The area of the smaller rectangle is 2x squared. So I just need to do 2 times 6.5 squared. And then I've done everything it wanted me to. 84.5. 84.5. Coconuts. Bananas. Elephants. Elephants. Ah, centimetres squared. So when I write quadratic...
Mm-hmm. I got 6.5 as an answer. That's good, that's what I got. So I'm not even getting an answer. Right. So well, I got like, that would mean that zero equals... The quadratic formula just tells us, rather than factorising then, getting your brackets and say, oh, it's the opposite of what's in this bracket, it just does it for you, the quadratic formula. It just tells you what it Yeah? All good? Stephanie, you're right there? I have lost the will to live, no? Okay. Okay, so for me, when people go, oh, there's an 8 marker, I'd be like, well, I'm really pleased, because for me, that wasn't using lots and lots of different hard maths there. I just did what it said, first of all, I just worked out those things, that's C grade, put them equal to that. And as soon as I put it into quadratic formula, that is A grade, but I don't think it gets any worse than A grade there. Is it possible just to like do like total area equals X, and just kind of like break it down? <clears throat> no, because you already had X in that. If you weren't given anything, like if you weren't told that there were X's in it, then yeah, you could have done that. I wouldn't know. It's easy to do that. Trust me, it's much easier to do that. Okay then, so, I'm looking at that. What's the key word that's jumping off the page for me? Similar. So we're going to write down S times SF equals L. S times SF squared equals L. S times SF cubed equals L. The first one is for a line. The second one is for an area. And the third one is for a volume. And I knew that because cubed is for volume. Centimeters cubed, centimeters squared, centimeters. Okay? So... It says, the value of the gold paint um, on the larger star badge is £18.55. Uh, £18. Calculate the value of the gold paint on the smaller star badge. You must show all your working. So if I'm painting, what am I painting? I'm painting a line, an area, or a volume. It's an area, isn't it? Think about it. Paint is going to cover an area. It's a two-dimensional thing. So I know that this comes to 1855. I need to work out what the scale factor is. Am I using the top one? Sorry if I move that there. Top one, middle, or bottom one? Middle. I'm not using the middle yet. Why am I using the top? It's just a straight line, isn't it? That's just a one-dimensional thing. It's just going in one, one way, okay? So to work out my scale factor, I want to do 3.5 divided by 2.5. So if you're a genius, you know it's 1.4. Is it? Yeah. Really? Oh. It's on camera, why would you make me look bad on camera? Can't see your face. Oh. Yeah. Didn't see how my sad little face I'm chirpy again now. Well, uh, well reminded. Right, so the scale factor is 1.4. But you are completely right to say that we will be using the second one. S times SF squared will equal the larger one. Now, in terms of the price, so to turn that into that, I need to divide by 1.4 squared. Okay? So for value, I'm going to say value of paint uh, equals area of badge. Um, so it would be £8.55. Brilliant. And if this doesn't go to two decimal places, it might be an indication that I might have done something wrong, possibly, but it may, may well go to more than any, that anyway. Well, Look at the answer I've got. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, honestly, we've definitely not done anything wrong. Okay, sometimes it's an indication that you've gone wrong, but in this case, I'm pretty confident. And again, if, if I was looking at it in the calculator paper, I was thinking, that looks like a pretty right number, I'd just go through everything again in my head. So have I done the right thing here? Right, that's a line, that's a line. Yeah, it should just be that divided by that to get the scale factor. It's definitely the large one, isn't it? Yeah, the gold paint on the larger badge. Yeah, I've definitely done everything right. I'd be thinking, right, have I shown as much work as possible? Have I shown how I worked out my scale factor? Yeah. Have I then shown why I'm doing area? Yeah. So you'd be getting loads of marks in this anyway, even if it did go wrong. But it's not wrong. It's all right. It's £9.46 to 2DP. Why did I go to 2DP? That's only instead of 1. It's money. Money always goes to 2. Any point in doing simultaneous equations? No. No, because? Came up yesterday. Subject of the formula? Yeah, that's come up as well? Yeah. Skip it. That's quite easy. I doubt this came up. So this is question 10. Sokotoa? Yeah? Why is it Sokotoa then? Good. Right angle triangle and an angle asked for. It's asking for a side as well, so it could be that we're using Pythag in there as well. Okay? Um, to work out the value of x, you would indeed actually use Pythag because we've got two sides given. We've got a missing side. 
So we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In our case, what is c squared? Brilliant. So we're going to have 6.7 squared plus 8.4 squared equals x squared. Stick that into your calculator. I get that number there. Uh, I'm going to bring over the squared as a square root now here. 10.74 agreed. As a rule, I wouldn't bother using that one in my next thing. You could effectively go and use that and keep it in his answer, but it's a bit of a long, horrid number that I've now rounded. Use the original two, okay? So when I'm lining up my um, my triangle, hype, um, cannon shoots, cannon ball, the opposite. There's my little cannon ball, opposite. So this is my adjacent. Okay, um, and I'm going to use the opposite and the adjacent, but you could use the hypotenuse if you kept that answering, but obviously it just makes the question a bit harder. So, opposite and adjacent, it's telling me to use, which one? Toa. Toa, so because I've underlined opposite and adjacent, I cross out opposite and adjacent through there, that's the one I've doubled crossed out, so I'd say tan theta, tan x, whichever you want to use, opposite over adjacent. So then tan theta equals uh, 8.4 over 6.7. And then theta would be tan to the minus one of that. 51.4 .4 then to 1dp. All good? That's another six marks. This is an easy paper, isn't it? I don't like it. You don't like it? So well, the back end of it was really easy. I'm not saying the front. We, we looked at paper recently where the back end it was absolutely fine. The front the it was so half, fussy. The first half, what, you like the second half? That's all right. I'm quite happy with that. Okay then, three, two, and one. This will probably be the last one we get to go through now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, without even reading it, I sort of knew what was asking me. Anyone else managed to pick it out now? Confirmation me. Yeah, good. Mean number of the pages. So, I need to do what column? Midpoint. Midpoint because it's group data, isn't it? It's between 1 and 100. Be very careful here. What is in the middle of 1 and 100? 50. 50.5. Well done. Yeah. If you're ever unsure, add them together. So, and then, let me stick it like this. 1 plus 100 and divide by 2. Okay. 50.5 is in the middle. I'm going to try and force in a midpoint column somewhere. I'm going to do it by the left-hand side here. I, just, I wouldn't bother writing it down in these lines here. You don't really need them. So 50.5. Then the next one, it, again, if you're unsure, just stick it into the calculator. So 101, add 200, divide by 2, 150.5. But hopefully the rest now will be pretty straightforward. What am I going to do as soon as I finish this column? Why do I do that? Yeah, that's what people do. If you're going to go wrong, that's where you're more than likely going to go wrong. And now you won't go wrong. Okay, you do another column called midpoint times frequency. There are two people, there are two books that have somewhere we've guessed 50.5 pages. Okay, so that is going to be um, 101. Uh, the next one, so you'll need to use calculator for. I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Ruth. 903. Okay. Total up the frequency. It probably tells you somewhere in the question. 
Yeah. Have I messed it up? Uh, 350.5 times 36, there you go. Thank you. That would be very hard to spot in the question as well, so thank you for spotting it. Take, take your time and they don't rush through. So then, total that, so I'm going to have plus 5406. You check this one for me as well, 22335. Okay, so my mean would be um, the total of the midpoint times frequency divided by the total frequency, which is going to be 2235 or 335 divided by 70. Now, this answer has got to be between what two numbers? 1 and 500. If it's bigger than 500, you've done it wrong. Okay, 319. Dead on. I'm going to say 319. I'm going to do it to one decimal place purely because it's easy to write one DP like that. Um, does that answer make sense? It's closer, closer to the 501, but I'm looking at that and thinking, yeah, that's fine. You can't have 319.1 Well, that's true. You could say 319 is a better answer. You will get the full marks of that, but I totally agree with your logic. Um, in terms of. Um, in terms of 319, the reason why I'm happy is, can you see it peaks, it's modal class, is 301 to 400. So that meant that there's lots and lots of books in that time, so I was expecting it to peak around there. I was expecting it to be certainly further down than 250. Okay, and last one. Uh, Guinevere has bought uh, an e-reader. Her e-reader can store 1,100 books. Calculate an estimate for the number of pages stored on her e-reader. Give your answer in standard form. Okay, that's quite a nice question. So basically using this answer here. So how many books? 1,100 multiplied by what's the average um, pages in a book? I'm going to go 319. I think Luke's answer makes better sense here than mine before. So... In there equals that, and because it's calculate paper, was it surprising that your calculator didn't put it in standard form? No. It shouldn't be. They'll, they'll if if it comes up, it will be that you have to put it in standard form. Okay, so that's going to be five zero nine times ten to the power one two three four five. Why does it have to be in standard form? Standard form it says, oh, just for the crack days. Oh. Oh, I thought you just wanted to wake you up before lunchtime. Okay, all good? Seems like a good place to stop.